look for the instability. If instability still persists, we have to repair the ulnar ligaments. And again, if necessary, we have to go dorsally Dr. to Jindal, repair any, the anchors any, and all that. Any any closing comments on this? To me? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, as I said, three ligaments, radio is capitated, long radio lunate, short radio lunate. Short radio unit is more for vascularity, so we were more concerned about the two ligaments. Probably the radio long radio unit ligament was a part of uh, the stylar process, and because this was fixed, that got automatically fixed. So it was not purely ligamentous; it was evolution of the bone. So because the bone was fixed, the long radio unit automatically got fixed. So this was done percutaneously, Sati? Yes, sir. Fortunately, the PC is uh, large and we in the, uh, we did it percutaneously, sir. Yeah. So so before we go on to the next case, uh, Abhijit, in, in, any any role of arthroscopy here? Um, not really. I, I don't think uh, arthroscopy would add. If this fragment were not easily reducible, if there would have been a ligament injury, like uh, perhaps uh, an entrocious ligament injury, maybe arthroscopy would have been useful. But we don't see any DC deformity. We don't, uh, on the dynamic fluoroscopy, we see both on the posterior anterior and lateral view, uh, very good uh, kinematics and kinetics of the proximal carpal row. Uh, with no dissociation, the DRU is stable, so I don't think the arthroscopy would add it. So, so, so fantastic take-home points from this case. One, reduction X-rays, or may, maybe may have been done in casualty. Two, a good fluoroscopic examination. Uh, assessment of the bony and ligamentous injuries preoperatively and plan everything. And maybe execute your treatment in stages rather than with a with a predetermined uh, plan fantastic i think it, it, please show it, the final x-ray again here is the three month old uh, three uh, three month post-op x-ray and the video i just got yesterday uh, from patient on whatsapp yeah. so the radius toilet is completely healed and uh, the video showing his uh, range of motion you know, look, uh, even the post uh, immediate post reduction and fixation X-ray yes. uh, appeared to show that the carpus was uh, seemed to be off the radius. Yes, sir. So, which which uh, this is a radial deviation X-ray. So, the yes. I would be more concerned about uh, whether you had the courage to do a ballotment uh, at the radiocarpal joint after having fixed it. Because uh, uh, certainly the uh, yes, a portion of the uh, uncovered lunate could be because of the existing uh, negative ulnar variance, but the uh, I'm not uh, entirely satisfied that the joint was completely stable merely by fixing the radial styloid. I don't know whether you did you hear me. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah we, 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 all of us are pondering. <laughs> uh, so, um, Bhatia sir, could I address that question because I was one of the surgeons on this particular case. Sure. Uh, we did look at the DRUJ and the DRUJ was completely stable. And no, no, was... I'm not talking about the DRUJ. If I haven't the said. Radio I'm talking about the radio carpal joint. Ah, you you mean a ballotment of the radio carpal joint? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. No, no, we did we did not look at that and. I would I would think yes there may have there, there might have been some instability keeping in mind that it's a fresh injury. Look, the, just a moment. Yes. The sir. Uh, the uh, the volar capsule is the strongest. True. True. Okay, and for the lunate to get come off the radius that way, it is impossible without those short ligaments which uh, which feed the lunate from the volar side uh, be, be being disrupted. Okay. So, uh, to have uh, a, a laissez-faire type of attitude uh, merely on the basis of the, the broad stability that you uh, gauged on the image intensifier after fixing the rail styloid, uh, I don't think was justified the, uh, the violence of the injury visible on the preoperative x-ray 
should have been justification enough to take a look from the voter side uh, open right uh, point well taken sir but uh, like i said these are pretty rare injuries and uh, we just had this one paper from uh, dumontier to fall back on <clears throat> where he has described and classified these injuries and they very categorically say that if there is a reasonably large uh, uh, kind of a fragment of the styloid fixing it is enough to uh, what is what is the what is the vintage of that paper uh you want well, years of my time in paris yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> but after that after that there have been not uh, much of publications regarding this injury uh, we looked at the literature and uh, this is the only paper that we found to have a classification and treatment guidelines and we don't even have any case series or any guidelines to fall back on so with whatever little we had to guide uh, or to charter the course uh, we just kind of fixed it and um, kept our, kept our fingers crossed but uh, i think uh, and this gentleman like i said was a radiologist we we mobilized him only in a thermoplast splint he went on to write his exams in a week's time and three months down the line he does not have any residual symptoms so uh, retrospectively uh, you know kind of looking back i think we were on course but however should a case uh, like this um, cross paths again i'll be sure to keep that point in mind sir to look for belotment to look for uh, not to take uh, the the uh, volar ligament injury um, uh, lightly and take it with a pinch of salt so thank you very much for that thank thanks satish i thank i think that, that that was a very nice case generated very useful discussion uh dr sanjay uh, are you ready with your case dr sanjay walke from kolapur yes sir fantastic please share your screen Uh, me and damodare are doing lot of external fixators for distal radius uh, in fact our indications being uh, fractures with intraarticular extensions and so on uh volar bartons with uh, fracture of the dorsal cortex even far distal radius and uh, distal radius extraarticular but unstable metaphyseal uh, bursting for all these we are using external fixator we have more than 200 cases by now giving us good results and uh, i went through the why gumper why gumper's message on the whatsapp group that this was the seminar and i thought okay i'll also present one intraarticular depression in this forum so so i had a case fracture of the distal radius with uh, articular cartilage depression uh, this is the pre op x ray you can see the fracture of the dorsal uh, dorsal cortex plus uh, uh, that is a uh, piece intraarticular depression so this is our first basic external fixator frame where we use every time uh, one Uh, pin in the second metacarpal base, one in the third metacarpal base, which are at around 40-50 degrees angle to each other, so that you have a uh, traction in two planes, radial as well as central. So, after the fixation, uh, after the external fixator is applied, then uh, then we pass K wires from the dorsal cortex into the radius, and Maneuver the depression. So at this point of uh, slide, the depressed fragment is almost up to the articular level. It is been elevated in even in the lateral view, and then we fix that with the uh, subcondyl wires. This is the post-op X-ray. So this technique we are practicing. We are not opening radius hardly any time except for. Uh, simple volar bartons without fracture of the dorsal cortex when we open and put in a volar plate otherwise we depend on this fixator we have not bone grafted in any of these cases uh, 
because this was a single case presentation, I thought I would show how we deliver the articular cartilage. Do you have a post-operative X-ray, the late post-op after fixation removal? Uh, Is that a removal? No, that I'll I'll put on Vahega of course WhatsApp. This is the patient's movements at two, uh, three months. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Let, let let me let me open by saying uh, I'm not a great fan of external fixators for distal radius. Uh, for me, uh, an intraarticular depression. Uh, requires elevation of the articular cartilage, uh, art articular fragment, which you have done. And I would rather fix it using some low profile uh, method, like a plate or perhaps a little less, <laughs> little less uh, uh, cumbersome fixator than a 3.5 escular, escular fixator. Uh, I'm not a big fan of putting shan spins in the radius and the ulna. Any other comments? And, uh, and in this case, I would have definitely gone. Uh, it, it looks like a dorsal rim fracture. I would have definitely uh, done a dorsal fixation for these. Uh, any other comments in uh, any of the once, once Once we elevate that articular fragment with KYs, see, we have incorporated those KYs into the fixator so that they don't back up. I'm not sure from where those KYs are going. Uh, I'm 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 really scared of putting anything percutaneous around the extensor tendons, hundred uh, percent. So nothing. If if this has worked for you, fantastic. I just I just uh, gave my opinion uh, to generate uh, start a discussion. Uh, any of the panelists would treat this any differently from uh, <laughs> Sanjay, what has been done. You, know, you have a vast experience of uh, two hundred cases. But uh, as I understand, once you remove these wires, which are uh, kind of a jack for the intraarticular piece, being in the cancellous area, if you remove these wires, won't it collapse? These wires are removed only at six weeks. So in that, because that's a void, it uh, doesn't collapse. No, I can show you the post. No, no, I'm just asking. I I'm just learning. We, so that's we fine. have nearly 15 such cases where we had. It doesn't collapse. It didn't collapse. Didn't collapse. And second thing is, uh, as I see, because of the distraction, uh, we see the space between the proximal carpal row and the radius is significant. Have you noticed uh, any stiffness of the fingers and sudex with uh, in your patients? In, in fact, out of all these cases, there was one diabetic who had frank sudex and took a long time to recover. And uh, four to five cases had little finger stiffness after completion of the treatment, but that recovered within one month. Only one case took very long, almost six months. And he had a frank sudex, but then he was also a diabetic. And then we had also used a distractor in that case. Since that time, we stopped using distractor for distal radius. We just rely on manual traction and gentle manipulation to reduce that hole. Uh, can we go back to your X-ray, uh, Sanjay? Which X-ray? Pre-op. X-ray of the same patient. X-ray. Pre-op, post-op. Post-op. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, good enough. Yeah, yeah Doctor Jindal, uh, I just just hold back your comment. Uh, we'll come back to you. Abhijit, you had uh, something to say. Yeah, just, uh, just a very quick question since Jindal sir brought out the, um, the discussion about RSD or Sudex. Uh, I would like to ask our expert panel, uh, how many of you consider putting these patients on uh, some kind of a prophylaxis in terms of vitamin C or some pregabalin to minimize the chance or risk of uh, Sudex? Sure, Ab Abhijit, we, we will just come back to that question sure. at the end of this case. Sure, sure, yeah, Dr. Sure. Jindal, please go ahead. Okay, so now one thing is, uh, uh, I would rarely see a Sudex. The one I remember, if uh, Dr. Karani is there and uh, is listening, the Sudex comes uh, mostly with a uh, over distraction. So that's a point of concern, but uh, I don't put fixators. So I would rather learn from your experience of over distracting. And you said you had only one. Uh, can yes. I can I butt in for a minute? By all means, sir. Uh, the step, the uh, from what I make out, the only thing fixing the fracture is the two wires. 
the uh, we are we are uh, hanging on two shan spins put very close to each other in the radius in uh, 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 right angles to each other and uh, two shan spins in the metacarpals so the which which is inherently an unstable uh, situation to start with the uh, i am I'm, i'm really uh, surprised that uh, in the 21st century I'm, although i am not into fixation of loren radius uh, for the last 20 years now the uh, i don't think uh th this this is an acceptable method of uh, i under i understand that you you had uh, your your positive experiences regarding the outcomes but uh, an intraarticular lower end radius uh, currently uh, I, i i don't know i'm sure pankaj ahire would be able to uh, back me up on this um, merely mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. upon two shan spins put so close to each other in the radius the risk of a sharp fracture is too high and uh, certainly it would not hold hold the wrist joint uh, stable very much yeah I, i i agree with your comment dr bhatia the technique that we use uh, or we propagate on a forum which is being viewed by many people should be predictable easily reproducible with the pros and cons well documented and known uh the experience though big can at best me please pardon me if i am very dogmatic about it can be called anecdotal uh the number of incisions placed in the hand combined would perhaps be much more in length than a single incision that would be required to internally fix this fracture uh many times we use external fixator as a runaway solution from doing a good internal fixation if the if this external fixation is going to add to something which a simple internal fixation would not achieve then i would think of putting a such a high profile fixator a high profile fixator which has been in the radius carries an external fixator does carry a higher risk of infection there is a risk of fractures around the shan spins in the radius there is risk of k wire loosening because of infection and if if you have k wires which are going right in sub articular through the skin and uh the the problems with over distraction in fact all the problems of external fixators leading to stiffness have been led to have have been traced back to over over distraction so i'm not sure even if you have had a uh, fantastic numbers and good experience whether we can propagate this as a standard of care abhijit you have your comment on this well um, obviously i think uh, you know uh, it's it's very interesting how we kind of uh, learn about different uh, ways to skin a cat from our colleagues and friends and um, uh, you know i had a discussion with vidisha madam yesterday and she made a very remarkable point about saying that yes maybe in the metropolitan areas um, we have access to and patients may be able to afford uh, high uh, quality implants and plates uh, and, and 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 no way am i justifying this as the only uh, determinant of treatment but uh, i think we need to take into consideration about the availability the training the uh, cost effectiveness of dealing with these fractures uh, at other places other than the uh, metropolitan areas um Yeah, they often say that uh, you know the proof lies in uh, you know the the, the tasting the uh, cake or the pudding or whatever so ultimately when you see that uh, the outcomes are um, are reasonably good um, i'm not sure if our ways of assessing outcomes with uh, different modalities of treatment are uniform yet one two is um, like i said um, 
just like you perhaps and I and many people on this forum or the panel are adept at using plates, uh, we may not have honed in our skills of using a fixator. And uh, I think sufficient amount of uh, dedication to a particular technique might help us in augmenting our levels of skills to the level uh, that Dr. Walke is demonstrating out here. So yes, um, this is uh, you know, a way that uh, is used by a lot of people. Uh, it is something that may be an alternative uh, when plates are not available or are not being uh, you know, a cost-effective factor for the patient and uh, where the surgeon training is better in terms of using a fixator than plates. So just my two cents on it. Uh, uh, can, can I just elaborate? Yes, uh, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, the, I, I did start putting fixators of th the 3.5 system in 1994, 95. And uh, they, from what I, what I remember of my a time where I, when we started putting fixators at all, at least I started putting fixed in my, in my very meager understanding of lower end data at that time. The, was that we would put it more along the radial side of the wrist alone. Uh, with, of course, the incident problems of the first, uh, first web uh, stretching that happened when we put two pins through the metacarpals, uh, second and third. Now, what I'm, the point I'm really trying to make here is that if we are the internal fixation was of the K wires and the fixator was being used as a neutralization device, then the neutralization device is merely on one pin in each frame. If you get what I mean, there is one pin proximal in the radius, one pin in the meta second metacarpal, one pin again in the radius, and one pin in the third metacarpal. So, uh, no, no matter how much you triangulate, uh, essentially, you are, uh, whether you had put the fixator or not, wouldn't have made much of a difference is what I, is the point I'm trying to make. In this particular case, I'm not talking about the remaining 199 cases uh, uh, the gentleman uh, has done, and I'm yeah. sure he must have had positive experiences with them. That what I'm trying to do is a case in point, that yeah. we are, we are re relying on a, a frame which has got only one pin on either side. Your yeah, yeah, point taken, Dr. Bhatia. So, so you, 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 are, you are highlighting the issue of the stability of each part of the external fixator frame and it would still have a parallelogram effect because they are based on single pin in each across the joint. Point yeah, taken. Yeah. So, it, 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 the fixator could have been rendered That's more stable. That. Is that, what, is that the point you are trying to make? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Bijit, uh, post, post your comment, we will go back to the preoperative x-ray and sure. see whether any one of us would have treated this any differently. Yeah. Just a yeah. very quick observation and something uh, that just came to my mind later on. <clears throat> so like Bhatia sir said, and it just struck me, isn't this where we came from? Uh, you know, when we were residents and we were looking at our teachers, uh, I think fixators were being used very frequently for distal radius fractures when implants were not all that uh, evolved and not ubiquitously available. One, two is look at what uh, the, the treatment uh, philosophy has uh, transformed into David Rusch's technique for very severe comminuted fractures or intraarticular fractures where he puts in uh, a plate, spanning plate across the wrist joint uh, on the third metacarpal so it, it's kind of an internal distractor, fixator distractor, till the soft tissue envelope has healed. And then people go on for some kind of a definitive fixation, or if you have been able to accomplish a reasonably acceptable alignment, articular alignment, you would accept that as uh, a, a, a favorable outcome for your patient. So whether you're using a distractor, whether you're using the Rouge technique, the Rouge uh, philosophy of managing these intraarticular fractures, whether you're doing arthroscopy assisted, uh, uh, kind of uh, a, you know, reduction of the articular depressed fragment, uh, pretty much akin to the Shatsko fractures. I think we need to keep or bear in mind that fractures are a mere complication uh, of a soft tissue uh, injury. So taking into consideration the soft tissue envelope, taking into consideration the alignment that may uh, you know, be reasonable enough, 
Uh, what is of paramount importance, I think, Dr. Walke, and I would like to share that with you especially, is to come up with a long-term follow-up. It is very remarkable. We have all been uh, hammered with the uh, magical two millimeter figure, right? We all say that if the if the two millimeter, uh, you know, kind of a step or uh, a gap is not present, there will be a favorable outcome. Nurk and Jupiter, who came up with this paper, also found that even in a very well aligned um, or a, a reduced uh, distal radius fractures, there was still a ten percent. Um, uh, association or a 10% of these cohort of people went on to develop uh, degenerative arthritis. Whereas if the step was more than two millimeters, 90% developed degenerative arthritis at 10 years. What does this tell? It tells that we were probably missing out on associated ligament injuries that might be one of the explanations for an instability and then subsequent arthritis. So it will be very interesting to know uh, the long-term outcomes, especially at around eight years, 10 years, if you keep a follow-up and then enlighten us as to what is happening with these patients in the long term. So just my two cents again. Thank you very much for yeah. hearing. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Vidisha, you have anything to say? Especially for compound fractures, fixator is beneficial and some juxtaarticular fractures, especially the dorsal rim fractures, uh, type A or B uh, fixator is helpful in my practice. And there is one paper comparing um, study of uh, volar plating with fixator at, at one year. Functional outcome was similar despite of the uh, change in the radiological parameters. There was one paper quoted by uh, Dr. Warrior. So related to functional outcome, maybe the results may be similar, I think. Yeah, uh, fortunately in uh, joints which are not actually loaded, unlike the lower limb joints, we will not see complications of myeloaligned joints for as long as seven and sometimes up to 20 years. That uh, issue is uh, what Abhijit highlighted, it is not only about the intra-articular steps, it is also about the joint alignments. As, if, as long as the joint is well aligned, intra-articular steps may be well tolerated. I think an important question that we all need to answer is the predictability of outcome that a particular procedure might give. Any procedure which we might say works best in my hands, may not, that, that may not be sufficient criterion. And if we have more than one procedure, yes, we could choose any one, depending upon the availability of uh, materials and uh, uh, the training that is available, affordability. However, when we progress from one procedure to another, or we pitch one procedure as an alternative to another, then the then the procedures must stand that comparison. If I'm offering B as an option to A, then B must perform better on certain counts as compared to A. Just because it is equivalent to A does not mean B becomes better. So I, that, that's where I feel if, if external fixator, we can keep extrapolating it to various flavors. I mean, we could treat shark femur factors in external fixators, but that cannot become the standard of care. So... Uh, a good internal fixation, a predictable restoration of articular cartilage, early range of motion exercises, early return to function, early return to activities of daily living. These are important parameters. And uh, as Abhijit very rightly said, un until we have a very well-defined uh, outcome measures, which, which will eventually be, I think, in, in every field of orthopedics, it will be patient-defined, patient-reported outcome measures is what we will eventually evolve to. That time, all these factors will have will have a role. I mean, I, I would never have a fixator put on my hand. Okay, next uh, one. Next. Sorry? I think that's enough. We've got the message. Next one, please. I'm sorry? I think we got the message. Let's no, I did not give any message. Yeah, so we got what you're saying. So let's proceed now. I, I, I don't think I gave any message. Yeah, fine. I'm just summarizing. Can we proceed now further? Yes, 
prevent terror. Uh, Pankaj, would you like to invite uh, the next uh, speaker or the presenter? Uh, you will be presenting, Abhiji, the next uh, case. If, if Vidisha Madam or uh, Sanjay Varkesar wants to want to present their, uh, finish their presentation, that's absolutely fine. Uh, uh, does Dr. Sanjay have one more case to present? Uh, Dr. Sanjay, I cannot hear you. I am not similar, but uh, I have added the different cases in this. Oh, I, I thought there were, I thought your presentation was complete already. No. So let, let's do one thing. Let's do one thing. Abhijit, uh, you go ahead with your case and then we'll, we'll come back to uh, Dr. Vidisha and Dr. Sanjay's final presentations. Okay. Thank you. I just have a very quick and a very brief uh, presentation. Um, I'll be sharing my screen here. Uh, is my screen visible, please? Is my yeah, we can see it. We can see it, yeah. Okay, so um, this is a 35-year-old right-hand dominant uh, gentleman who had a fall from vehicle, presented uh, with a deformity, swelling, and pain, and uh, the past medical history was non-contributory, and he's a, a non-smoker. So this is a fresh case that presented to the, uh, to the clinic. And this is the posterior anterior view. And then this is the lateral view. I could uh, go back to the posterior anterior view. And I would like to pick uh, on the panelists' uh, brains to kind of uh, share with us uh, what is it that uh, uh, we glean from these two x-rays, any further investigations required, and what would be the management. So this is the PA view, Vidisha, madam. Would you like to um, to comment, please? Or do you have any other views, lateral view, traction? This is the lateral. This is the lateral view, madam. Uh, or CT scan? Uh, I, I will come to that. But uh, if you if you were to just kind of look at these uh, kind see, of what see, what would be your primary the view? There is definitely ulnar styloid fracture with fracture of the ulnar corner as well as. There is dorsal rim fracture, but I need additional views. All right. So, uh, uh, Abhijit, just, to, yes, just to go back. Can you go back? Yes, sir. It's obvious that there is shortening of the radius and the radial displacement of the lower end radius. So, automatically, the, uh, the sigmoid fossa fragment has pulled the styloid with the TFC uh, by the corresponding amount of distance. So, the uh, yes, the uh, the one thing that is just staring at us is the basically the shortening of the radius and the radial displacement, both of which indicate that at the end of all the radial sided fixation, one would have to address the ulnar side after evaluating the stability of the distal radial ulnar joint after you achieve stability of the radial side. Right, sir. Right. So, uh, the other thing is that the the dorsal displacement okay, is because of the a large cortical metaphyseal fragment, which has yeah. separated out uh, the rest of the lower end radius, seems to be uh, uh, moving uh, together. Yeah. yeah. So, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, so now let, let us see the traction view that you have shown us. Post reduction. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry for the disturbance. Uh, Pankaj had just called up. There is some uh, loud noise going on around his house, so he will be muted for some time. Uh, but we can continue. Uh, so, uh, for the point that I wanted to uh, discuss with the panelists and the viewers, were, uh, so Vidisha Madam brought out a very nice point. In I think in summary, you were trying to refer to the uh, to the uh, columnar classification of Wrigley and uh, uh, Regazzoni. So there is an ulnar column uh, involvement, there is a intermediate column involvement, as well as there is this radial column involvement. And we can see from the, uh, and like uh, uh, Bhatia sir very rightly pointed out, there is a shortening. And now if we take into consideration the, uh, the, the Stewart criteria and the uh, Lafontaine criteria, 
uh, which render or which help us determine whether the fragment is uh, is uh, uh, unstable or not, or the the, the 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 fracture is unstable or not, is dorsal comminution and angulation a shortening of more than five millimeters, and of course osteoporotic bone. So if you look at the uh, this particular X-ray. Again, you would see that there is a breach in both the cortices. There is combination here. And uh, this is uh, you know, kind of a fracture that is inherently unstable. The reason I am, uh, I am posting this case is uh, because uh, uh, this was something that uh, a lot of people would think about treating with K-wires. So now, and this was which photos advice to the patient as well. So this is the traction view, ma'am, as you asked for. Uh, and you can see that most of those fragments are aligning pretty well, and this is the lateral view uh, in traction. So, where are we with these views now, ma'am? Uh, so, want... Styloid is quite displaced. Okay. And probably that will cause some instability. Mm -hmm. So, this is a traction from... view. This is a traction view, madam. Yeah. So, in the traction view, most of the fragments are aligning pretty well. Yeah. But uh, what I see is that uh, obviously the styloid is still off. Uh, the ulnar styloid is still off. Uh, there is still uh, some, you know, the combination which you can see in the metaphyseal area. The articular alignment looks pretty good. And uh, this is the lateral view just for your reference. So at this stage, what would be your... Uh, modality or choice of fixation of this fracture? As this is... Uh unstable fracture, though it is aligned well with the traction view, I will go for internal fixation with volar plate and fix all the columns with screws and intraoperatively check the stability. If there is any dorsal jetting of ulna ballotment positive, then I will fix the ulnar styloid with suture anchor. Okay. Uh, anyone else from the panel? Jindal sir, Bhatia sir? I agree with Disha. With Disha, we'll go with with the internal fixation. We'll put a, I'll put a volar precon. Okay, right. So just as a kind of a teaching uh, point, we put in a K wire to assess if K wires would have been sufficient. Um, and this was just to kind of demonstrate that K wires may not be sufficient. So here in the PA view, one might still be uh, tempted to think that maybe K wires would be sufficient. Look at, looking at the PA view, the alignment looks reasonably good. And then we also got a lateral view and lo and behold, the lateral view uh, you know, fails to reveal uh, restoration of the normal parameters, and you can see that there is a combination of the volocortex, which uh, still uh, is not being addressed. And the moment we left the traction, you can see that I'm maintaining the traction. The moment we left the traction, there was a collapse of this fracture. So we decided to go in, um, and you can see from the uh, from the uh, clinical pictures the amount of combination. The fragment that was seen on the X-rays is being held in the forceps here. So there is metaphyseal combination which uh, is uh, causing the collapse and is rendering the uh, fracture unstable. And it's a pretty kind of a distal fracture. And uh, like uh, Madam said, we address this fracture with uh, a, a uh, volar locking plate and we retain that K wire for some time. And then we assess the DRUJ. The DRUJ was still unstable. So we did a, uh, an open THCC repair and this is the lateral view, and this is the uh, posterior anterior view to, uh, uh, to highlight the articular surface reduction. Uh, what we should be looking for are the two rims of the distal radius, which can be seen distinctly, the dorsal and the volar, and that would give us uh, an indication about the articular alignment, although this was not uh, an articular fracture as such, but uh, this is something that you should keep in mind. And this patient went on to have a reasonably good outcome. Very quickly, another example where uh, some more additional investigation may be required. Here, we just got traction views and did nothing more than that. This particular X-ray, again, uh, is a, a fracture. But there is something that meets. Uh, I was because, yeah, for some people, it is over. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm like Rip Van Winkle, I'll have to wake up now. 20 years are over and the pandemic is gone. So you're simple dancing without masks. 
since you have already declared your political uh, inclinations uh, you, are, you are safe we are li- we are live by the way we are live sir let's <laughs> yeah okay can i can i reshare again is uh, yeah so uh, very quickly uh, i was just uh, you know addressing uh, madam madam uh, do you have any take pankaj uh, you could also chip in uh, about this fracture what would be the way to go there is ulnar corner fracture and important uh, stabilizers are attached there so it should be fixed with a small mini plate and or uh, do you have 3d cut uh no so no madam we just have uh, this particular plain ct scan so this may need a dual plate dorsally okay i mean uh, you mean a volar and a dorsal is that correct what you're saying or uh, two i think uh, there are two dorsal fragments on this okay. transfer so this may need a two mini plates dorsally one okay. for the lunate column and one for the styloid corner if this is dorsal then all right so if you look at the the sagittal view um, you would appreciate that the fragment uh, the fracture is involving both the dorsal and the volar cortices and then there is a separate ulnar corner fragment so uh, one of the ways to deal with this would be to have a volar plate a variable angle locking plate and then try to purchase get a purchase into this fragment uh, with one of the screws but looking at the combination and the size of the fragments uh i would uh, perhaps think that it would be a difficult task so what we did was we first uh, did a volar plate to stabilize the volar cortex and then once we had a good stable reduction we went in dorsally to uh, put in a buttress uh, pre contoured plate for the uh, for the ulnar corner of the fragment and again this is something that uh, so the the point that uh, i wanted to uh, uh, drive home was that sometimes uh, one plate may not be enough uh, to uh, to deal with these fractures and again these are fractures which are outliers uh, you need to keep an eye open for such kind of fractures and uh, deal with them appropriately should they come your way so thank you very much uh, any any uh, suggestions any comments yeah abhi uh, is a fantastic case in fact uh, when, whenever i have uh, dealt with such fractures and gone ahead uh, with a dorsal plate uh, on occasions i have had i have displaced the fracture volar wards and then i have had to undo the dorsal fixation go volar put a plate volar and then come back dorsally so i i think this this is a very uh, very nice way that you have described knowing sure that you have you have put a stopper on the volar side and then go dorsal and put a buttress yeah. because because the dorsal needs to be necessarily a buttress plate true, true. and the moment you buttress and uh, you over contour the plate in order to get the bone fragments together uh, am i allowed to give give one more message or only one yes, message please. okay then then it's fine then i will continue with my messages uh okay there is another problem which i have found is uh, when we put the volar uh, plate on the volar on a uh, less defined uh, cortices as compared to the volar cortex you know it's it's, it's a, a severely comminuted piece is usually dorsally uh, it's not uncommon that i have found that i have fancy and therefore i i find there is a very strong message in what abhijit has shown that uh, we should not hesitate putting the volar plate as a as a stopper before we start going dorsally and we know that we need, we need to put a dorsal plate skewers and uh, our students and fellows should bear in mind so kenneth uh, koval one of the famous trauma surgeons he uh, came out with his rule of the thumb very very simplistically said if the dorsal cortex is intact goal of fixation if the volar cortex particular case uh, and it was not very evident from the x ray and that's the reason why uh, we should keep an open mind and i think even the traction view would not give you that idea about the uh, dorsal ulnar corner so getting a ct scan done in such uh, you know kind of uh, be in a position to address the uh, the issue completely so that you have all your uh, armamentarium ready is of paramount importance otherwise uh, we will be in a lurch uh, as far as that fragment is concerned so thank you very
Uh, Dr. Vidisha, you need to unmute yourself. Now, can yeah, you? We, yeah, we can hear you. We can see your presentation. Yeah. Okay. So, this is another case of, and this lady, one and a half month old, 54 year with right hand dominance, uh, presented with neglected uh, right wrist trauma and presented to me with reduced range of motion and grip strength. Pankaj? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me how, how to proceed with this. So, uh, I at one and a half month, I would still uh, call this a, call it an ascent malunion, and it may still be possible to correct almost all parameters. I I would I would think that once the radius is restored to its normal alignment, the styloid fragment may need to be fixed in order to impart good stability to the DRU chip, but I, I would leave it to an assessment later. On store the alignments, I think, are part of a later discussion. We will go over with that. But I would definitely restore the radial anatomy. So, you prefer opening wedge? I, I, it will be a dorsal opening wedge. However, I will go volar. That's what I said. The technicalities of execution is a part of later discussion. But in principle, I would correct the alignment. Now, how I would do it, I would explain. I would look at the fracture line volar words and go parallel through that fracture line, but parallel to the joint. I will not set the distal radius with the distal radius in order to get a good bone chunk over there for fixation. And I would use the volar plate, a sturdy volar plate as my reduction tool to effect the reduction. And the dorsal gap, I would leave unattended. I may not... Is it? Uh, yes, madam. Uh, so I think um, what Pankaj said is very right, right, uh, correct. So you could you could do a volar osteotomy or a dorsal osteotomy. Uh, for me, technically, I think uh, looking at the angulation and looking at accomplish this by a percutaneous osteotomy with a small incision through the dorsal aspect, and then uh, go in volar. Um, now, whether you put in a bone graft or not is again um, something that is. Uh, Debatable. There are a lot of people, uh, not only to fill in the void, but also to provide support and augment uh, the union. Um, there are some people who rely only on the hematoma or maybe use an artificial bone graft to uh, fill in the, uh, the, the osteotomy side. The uh, radial length, the volar tilt, and the radial inclination, as close as possible to the uh, normal parameters. What I would also think of is after we have done a corrective osteotomy and uh, then take a call, if anything, but more often than not, uh, the DRG renders itself stable once the uh, osteotomy has been uh, corrected. I mean, the, the malunion has been corrected and fixed. Yeah, uh, just the relative lengths of the radius and Allah. Uh, that is where the maximum trouble happens because the soft tissues are contracted and very often. Uh, the recommendation to uh, or recommendation for the iliac crest bone graft actually holds true for this particular parameter. Uh, over last few cases that that are spread over last many years, so it, these are this is not an uncommon surgery that I perform. It's an it's quite uncommon. I would rather do a ulna shortly than try to restore the radius to its length. So there are two parameters in the radius that I would try to correct, the, the radial inclination and the volar tilt. Part of the height will get restored when the volar tilt is corrected and rest of the compensation can happen with, with Alna shortening. Uh, Dr. Bhatia, Dr. Abhijit, you have any comments to make on this? Bhatia, sir, would you like to go first? Uh, I just that... Uh, just for the semantics, it is a dorsal tilt. So you will. It is not a volar tilt. It is a dorsal tilt. Uh, no. Or maybe maybe I have got my terminology wrong. No, no, so no. we are talking about restoration of the volar tilt of the 
radius. Oh, uh, 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 surface of the radius. Yes, yes, yes. The volatile uh, articular surface, not right. the fragment, not the fragment. <laughs> Okay. No, I, I, your your point about uh, not disturbing the the uh, fragile union that has happened in the last six weeks in this patient, so that you have enough uh, bone for the plate to hold, uh, is a valid point, I believe, because um, then you are carrying a portion of the metaphyseal uh, shaft, metaphyseal uh, radius with the distal fragment in your in your correction of the alignment so that i think is a useful message uh, for people because the uh, the low hanging fruit would be to go through the fracture site and try to deliver it like a shoehorn uh, back to uh, what we should have been the original reduction but then you would be left with a void and uh, very little uh, bone distally to fix it with screws because the the cancellous bone will get compressed when you when you shoe on that fragment back in place so that, that that absolutely has been the experience we are we are, we are left with a shell if we try to go with the fracture so yeah abhijit you have a yeah so uh, i too am pretty big on using uh, an iliac crest bone graft um, because i believe that it not only gives you the uh, the uh, support subchondral support but also helps in uh, filling in the void and then augmenting the union traits. Uh, so this is a very, uh, I would say, an ideal kind of a case for the so-called Fernandez osteotomy, uh, where you use uh, a trapezoidal wedge graft to um, to address and correct all the radius parameters. Um, at one and a half month uh, time, um, I would perhaps not be uh, intimidated by the soft tissue contracture, like you mentioned, but yes, for, for chronic malunions, that is something that we need to bear in mind and then maybe address the ulna with an ulna shortening osteotomy. K virus while doing a dorsal opening wage? Um, temporary K virus in the sense uh, to align the fragments. Corrected. They, they work pretty well for this, so that kind of avoid, but there, yes, for the chronic malunions. I, I am also inclined to use a temporary external fixator. Uh, that you wrote of Abhiji. Uh, two, two components of the soft tissues which I am pretty worried about post three weeks of the of about that. And when, whenever we are talking about an indirect reduction from the volar side, then sometimes it's the dorsal contracted periosteum is the one which may not point out and... Uh, uh, so, in my practice, I very systematically release the brachioradialis uh, when we are doing corrective osteotomies. The uh, below before embark embarking on treatment is to determine if uh, this patient has had any stiffness of his metacarpophalangeal and the interphalangeal joint and work on that first and then as he joined. Parameters were like this, radial tilt. 10 degrees dorsal tilt, 35 degrees, and ulnar variance 7 mm. We are put in distal and proximal fragment connected to a distraction rod, and the fracture size or site was distracted till the ulnar variance was immediate post op picture, and this is the follow up x ray. So I was not happy looking at the post op x ray because the dorsal tilt was the outcome. Although the radiological parameters were not that good or perfect. So my observation, I should have gone dorsally to correct the volar tilt and the plate should have been properly countered to restore volar tilt because the volar tilt was well as radial shortening up to 5 mm, inclination up to 15 degrees, sagittal tilt can be accept acceptable up to 15 degrees. I was just thinking that uh, despite not having a perfect inclination is not completely restored, as you said. Yes. So, so that that almost acts like a distraction, arthroplasty for the DRU. The factors which, which we observe over a number of years and then come to know about it. I'm not sure whether these are documented factors. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big... And uh, it, it's, it's surprising that uh, we in mind are so keen on... Um, 
reproducing the anatomy and yet uh, at times we are surprised. So yes, the radiological outcomes uh, need not necessarily be an indicator of the functional outcomes. Uh, two, I think what is of paramount cell articular surface of the radius, I think uniformly uh, the functions will be good as long as uh, you know the radial height and the uh, interest when we start seeing less than optimal outcomes. Thank you. Dr. Bhatti, are you around? This uh, <laughs> malurated radius. I understand you may not be doing them. They, they, uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, fascinated by the uh, restoration of anatomy that is being done today. And uh, I think one should hit for that. A 54-year-old, now I'm 57 and a half. I would not consider a 54-year-old person elderly anymore. When I was 40 <laughs> years old, yes, not now. So the uh, the uh, yes the socioeconomic background from which the patient uh, seemed to come uh, the sort of uh, clinical result that was obtained uh, was remarkable, but the uh, in the current scenario uh, I don't think we should discriminate between uh, cities and uh, this uh, tier two towns or whatever the fixation modalities and the uh, should be widespread and uh, the criteria should be strictly applied no matter where one is located. Fantastic. I, I, I think the, 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 this case virtually completes the distal radius scenarios that we will see. Uh, you, do you have any more cases, Dr. Vidisha? Yes, I will go through. Yeah. Uh, before, before you go ahead, before you go ahead with your next case, uh, Abhiji, Yes. Uh, are, are there any more cases pending from any of the presenters? Uh, Dr. Varke would have uh, liked to present a case, but I'm not sure if he has joined in again. Uh, I had asked him to join in. At yeah, Calder. so if, if Dr. Yeah. Varke... Hello, hello, Abhijit. Yes. Dr. Varke has joined? I, I would not present anything now because uh, I do not have follow-up x-rays. That was a presentation I made for Kolapur Orthopedic Society about our technique of using an external fixator. So only immediate post-op x-rays are available. So on that's, that's absolutely fine as long as it generates good discussion. Right, sir. Yeah. So, so, so if you have cases, sir, you, you can keep your presentation ready. Okay. Is, is that okay, sir? Yes. Yeah. So after Dr. Vidisha's this case, we will take your presentation. Is that fine? Yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Vidisha, go ahead with your case. This is a case of bilateral wrist trauma. A left side, it was minimally uh, undisplaced rather. And right side, it is a comminuted fracture. So what are the options for right wrist treatment? Whether to go for pinning, fixator, or plating, volar, dorsal, that's the issue. So this is the CT scan. Shall I proceed or you want to comment, Pankaj? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking. Asking a wrong question. Distal radius, I always want to comment. People, yeah, have, to yeah. people have to forcibly stop me from commenting. Okay. <laughs> Abhijit, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, I have a question uh, to all the panelists. So, um, how many of you, or rather, uh, you know, like, uh, would you rather rely on a two dimensional? Uh, CT scan to guide your planning and your judgment or uh, do you think the 3D scans add uh, more to the understanding of the fragments of the mal union? Uh, because I feel that the 3D uh, reconstructions add a lot of, uh, you know, kind of artifacts and uh, may not be, except in maybe a few, uh, you know, uh, uh, a small cohort of patients, I find the 2D uh, scan images to be more contributory. So I just wanted to know from... A login called iPhone. I'm not sure who is that. So okay. if Dr. Okay. Jindal, if Dr. Yeah. Jindal is around, he can comment. Uh, Dr. Bhatia, please go ahead with your comments. Uh, yeah, I agree with Abhijit. on this merged a few uh, sections and given a broad uh, outline of all the fragments. But uh, accurate assessment of uh, the... Uh, bank on the uh, 2D CT alone. 3D CT has its role in a in a few isolated cases, and uh, those will, can be taken on per case basis. Yes, is not sufficient. I need a CT scan. 
looking at the X-ray uh, very carefully, diligently, if I am able to trace the sequence of events that are something which I am not able to explain on the basis of what I am seeing on the X-ray, and then I would go for a CT scan. Uh, otherwise, as long as I can, I, I know the mechanism of fracture that I can explain with a X-ray alone. Then I about what do you have to tell us about this case? So, Abhijit. Uh, yes, madam. What will you so, do in this case? Yeah, I'm not satisfied that the uh, left left wrist fracture is as benign as the lunate fossa has definitely sunk in, and um, uh, there would be a, a serious malalignment at the level of the radio lunate joint. I would feel, and the widening of the uh, distal radius. So it, so it looks not very severely displaced. There is a there, there is a lot going on in that tiny two centimeter area. Yeah, Dr. Vidisha, you have person, and uh, the left wrist was obviously pinned in uh, with restoration of the surface. It, it it was minimally displaced, so it was. Uh, these dipunch or intraarticular fractures involving the lunate fossa, and also look at uh, any associated intrinsic ligament injuries that may be very frequently associated with dipunch fractures. Just just one. Okay. Uh, congruity, the step in the articular surface, the scaphoid fossa is more forgiving than the lunate fossa because That's of the it. because uh, the stability of the joint or the subluxations is the lunate fossa which is absolutely not forgiving. All right, point taken. Thank you. I I am a little I am a little dogmatic about plating. I just use plate as a tool, uh, just like people would use fixator for various reasons. I find it very convenient to use a plate. So I would better line on the volar side is almost almost at the watershed line. It, it is where the flare has ended. That is where the fracture is. So conventional fracture, the radial styloid, which is a and there is a large dorsal fragment with it. So. After fixing the volar rim, I will not hesitate to put another plate on the radial styloid. The dorsal combination on the dorsal cortex, the combination that I would perhaps leave alone. That 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 may not require an additional fixation. If if I address these two columns, the the radial column uh, through styloid fixation and the and the intermediate column through the volar plate. I would just uh, leave the dorsal alone. The dorsal is part of both these columns, so I would just leave it alone. Abhijit, you want to defer? Um, I think uh, I'll, I'll agree most uh, with most points uh, that Pankaj said. This is a very, um, I think, a, a glaring example where you would uh, want to do a brachioradialis uh, uh, you know, release to get a reduction. And then uh, the only thing I would perhaps differ about is a dorsal combination. Once we have buttressed and fixed the volar aspect of the fracture, uh, that is when you could take a call about the dorsal combination. And it could be fixed by any method, uh, percutaneous or maybe a small uh, pre contour plate. Uh, options are many. Anyone wants to add anything? So. Yeah. Uh, so, in, in, in fact, this, this is one of those factors in which I would also keep dorsal plating as an option. Yes. Definitely. If, if, it's a, if I get a good volar rim fixation, fine. If not, I would not hesitate opening dorsally and putting a dorsal buttress. So, this is the x-ray of the left wrist and follow up uh, x-ray of the same wrist. And this is the right wrist, which was treated with a volar plate applied dorsally. Juxtarticular plate was used uh, to avoid use of two plates. The uh, this thing Lister tubercle was uh, trimmed, and uh, with addition of a radial styloid wire, uh, the dorsal combination was fixed with screws and plate. And this is after implant removal, after eight months, and one year follow up of the same patient. There is some. Uh, terminal restriction of palmar flexion on the right side, but he has good functional range. 
So, any comments? Vijit, any, any comments? Dr. Bhatia, an any comments? Yeah, I think an excellent example of improvisation on table. Um, what I would be concerned about is, uh, I think, and what you rightly did was remove that implant. Uh, usually when we use the, uh, the pre-contoured plates meant to be applied dorsally, uh, we do not remove them usually. But uh, volar implant being used on the dorsal aspect obviously uh, might be a reason for tendon attrition and irritation and uh, removing it would be justified. Uh, the second thing is, uh, um, uh, I would, I would perhaps, uh, you know, have attempted to restore the volar tilt a little bit more than. Uh, but obviously, you are the better judge of it, whether it was possible on table or not. But I think, other than that, the outcomes speak for themselves. Rest. Of you see, the uh, the left wrist dorsiflexion is limited. You can see that, that the, in the fact that the patient has had an excellent outcome regarding pronus supination. And this is a pain-free uh, range of movement, yes, I would yes, assume, yes. right? Yeah. Doctor, has had any influence on your on your choice of treatments? Uh, in our area, I have to think about economic. Okay. And since it was a more dorsal combination, I went dorsally. So, uh, it's easier to reduce dorsal wall and fragments through dorsating yeah. because of the hematoma. Can I? Abh Abhijit, yeah. your comments on that and also, and also whether the fracture being bilateral and, and they may play truant in the uh, you know, choice of implants. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that we should not shy away from using as many approaches as possible, see the reduction properly, and then fix it by any uh, which way that is possible. Even for the left wrist, I think that intra, so in that particular fragment, uh, uh, dorsal uh, corticotomy or a dorsal window, pretty much like we do for Schatzker's fracture. And then you elevate that fragment and then you put in a small uh, bone graft. And uh, we have that uh, even uh, a K wire may not be necessary. You can decide about fixation. But uh, I would be more tempted to, uh, you know, make that small window and elevate the fragment with a small dura. It's not very remarkable, but yet, yes, there is a little bit of loss of dorsiflexion on the left side and uh, palmar flexion on the right side. But I think that is attributable to the... Does a fracture, uh, uh, fractures being bilateral, does that, does that have any bearing on the choice of position that you use? Not in my practice, no. Distal radius fracture on one side, and then a scaphoid fracture and a distal radius intraarticular severely comminuted fracture on the other side. And uh, we were perilunate, we used uh, uh, a volar plate. So, irrespective of the of the time that is required, it took me about six hours for both fractures. Uh, whether you you were able to close both the wounds in the same sitting, volar uh, wound as well as dorsal wounds, since you are using dual plating, volar as well as dorsal. The, the, there is a very small caveat for this. We never operate these fractures in the acute sitting. Three inc incisions occasionally a problem, but as I said, I, I, I'm far more comfortable operating these post one week. Sometimes I would, I would, times it's out of compulsions, we may have to operate on fourth day, fifth day, but I would definitely avoid operating on first day, second day. Okay. But, but I agree with you. Yeah. So since you are doing after seven to 10 days, there is no need of any secondary suturing or grafting on volar side. I don't think it precludes when you are operating. I think one more advantage is uh, that you get multiple opportunities to meet up with the patient and explain to them about the outcomes, the physiotherapy. The... Yeah, uh, Dr. Bhatia, you have any closing comments on the case? More than what we might be seeing. So if you had two relatively stable and displaced fractures, both race, would you, would you cast both of them in an adult or I'm, I'm, I'm still hinting you definitely want to fix one of them and put them out of cast as soon as possible. Yeah, that is true because one hand should be at least free for eating purposes and... Jeet.
Yes, Pankaj. Yes, Pankaj. Yeah, it, yeah. If 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 it works well for one hand, then why not do it for both hands? You mean plating? Plating. Yeah. It's, uh good good, good take home points from this case uh, a delay of 7 to 10 days helps uh, i think one very subtle point that dr vidisha made is if because then th th that can take care of lot of uh, tendon associated with problems and whenever you are facing this situation far better to explain to the patient that you are going to do an early implant removal so the patient is mentally prepared for another surgery fantastic i think this was a very very uh, nice case for discussion uh uh dr sanjay are you ready with your presentation i think this would be the last cases that we would discuss yes yes before we wind up <clears throat> ma'am could you stop uh, sharing your sharing screen, your screen yeah thank you Actually, this was a presentation given to Kolhapur Orthopedic Association. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. We can see your presentation. This was a presentation given to Kolhapur Orthopedic Association yes. about our technique of external fixator. Yes. For distal radius, intraarticular, and extraarticular fractures. Yes. And uh, uh, we tried to include different. cases in this yes you need to start slide show so this was this case this is our basic technique of fixator yes. i showed that previously uh, we either augment it with a cross rod or we make it a square frame to be more stable like this this i have shown you this was that case i showed you intraarticular depression now this was a case of a comminuted volar barton that was a volar barton with fracture of the dorsal cortex and uh, intraarticular uh, cartilage depression also so we have put a fixator then we put the k wire to elevate that fragment and it is uh, volarly plated so this is the intra pictures on the cm which shows plate in place we have not yet fixed it the articular fragment is elevated with a k wire and we are putting the subcondral wire to stabilize that yeah uh, dr sanjay can i interrupt you here yes so yes. so so you 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 are using an external fixator here as a, as a method of holding the reduction for yes. you yes yeah i i yes. think that i and, and uh, it, it i think that's a one wonderful use of an external fixator to to aid holding the reduction while you put the plate in situ virtually this was on table like say then this is a case wherein it is basically a ligament injury it is on the avulsions of the cortices we had just put in a fixator this is a case we did somewhere in 1996 so that is around 24 years now now this is a far distal radius uh, which you which will not have purchase only with k wire so we use fixator as a distraction module to keep the maintain the length and fix it with k wire this is another case of far distal end radius where we put in a fixator and fix it k wise now this is a comminuted distal radius with intraarticular comminution there is also a dipunch in this that is its range of movement so this was only to present what we do on fixator or what type of yeah. fractures so i do not have personally the record of post operative x rays and all but i'll promise you that uh, Dr. Sanjay, for this forum, my results from between eight years to twenty years, all cases I'll collect and put that on this forum. Wonderful, uh, Dr. Sanjay. The, the the conviction in your talk is very very palpable. So so I think that 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 of you know that that actually stands uh, so strongly for the technique that you use. Now. many of us who have moved away from external fixators for variety of reasons if if there are a couple of points that you would like to mention for 
everybody that makes your technique or makes your use of external fixator so successful uh what would those be i mean what are the key points that you would say okay these are the four five take home points for you for the external fixator to work well for you so what would those that, be uh, before that i would also inform you yes i have done three cases of bilateral fixators for distal radius done in the same city that's nice comminuted distal radius bilateral which were fixed by external fixator on either side on one side it was also put a bother we also put a bother uh, plate and the other was external fixator with ky so three cases of bilateral the first thing i would say is never try a reduction before your fixator is assembled okay. that is the first thing to be observed most of the times i i went to some junior surgeons then they keep that in reduction and then put a fixator then while putting the fixator it makes all the mess of the fracture and you can never reduce it back in place that is first thing so always put a fixator first and then do reduction by manual traction and manipulation so that i would definitely advocate uh, the second thing is uh, we learned in a era where our teachers taught us to reduce most of the things close way back in 1984 85 86 so we are geared up with that technique that probably i think mattered a lot worse in our life and our experience and depending on the fracture anatomy at reduction then we decide what wires are to be put sometimes we put subcondral wire first then fix the radial uh, radial side sometimes we put the radial lateral wires first dorsal medial wire and then we put the subcondral wires but that then entirely depends on the geometry after reduction and putting the same and we have stopped using a distractor because uh, most of the cases of some stiffness in the fingers which lasted for one month and then one case of sudex they were all we had used a distractor in those cases so we just stopped using distractor and just relied on manual traction i i think these are these are fantastic take home points uh be before i come to you abhiji uh one uh dr sanjay mentioned about secondary loss of reduction that if you reduce the fracture first and then try to get the fixator in place then you will have a loss of reduction he says put the fixator first then reduce the fracture and then perhaps you uh, align whichever way you want to connect it, connect the rods to addressing it uh, the k wires in fact many times there is a general belief that for uh, fragment specific fixation means expensive implants no fragment specific fixation can be done using k wires using sutures using bone cement whatever ultimately the idea is to identify the need for fragment specific fixation three uh, avoiding use of distraction i think he mentioned that just a manual traction is all the distraction that is being used i think that that perhaps could be a key in a very uh low rate of uh, crps that he reports i think these are fantastic take home points if you do really wish to use external fixator to your advantage uh, abhijit your comments really observe his uh, uh, x rays very carefully i don't see a distraction uh, in any of the x rays in the mid carpal joint which is the i think the number one reason why people develop Uh, crps like picture so uh, dr varke uh, i think i should commend you for these fantastic outcomes with a not so conventional modality of treatment and i think uh, this is something that we should keep in our minds as an alternative in some very distal and difficult fractures as an augmentation or as a adjunct to our treatment uh, pankaj there was a question uh, on the youtube channel uh, Would the panel please address this question? And the question is by uh, Dr. Nasim Jilani, and the question is: uh, Is there any experience with pin plates for distal radius fractures? So I don't. I, I don't have any. Right. I think he's he's wanting to talk about fragment specific fixation. 
uh, the pin plates. And I think uh, you have uh, addressed that question in your, uh, uh, in your comment a little while ago. So I hope Dr. Jilani uh, you know, appreciates the answer. Uh, madam do you have any experience with pin plates please? yeah I, I thank you all for all this and i promise you that i will give you the data of my cases from eight years to 20 years follow that's a promise thank you, thank you sir thank you thank you Imagine. dr walke that was a, that was a fantastic i, I have one more question please for you dr over. walke yes uh, so, uh, if, if, you, if you really summarize, uh, you know, the, the entire discussion make patients more comfortable and th that's that's also one of the big positives that you could be drawing by use of the external fixator. Do you think you are also very happy with this method because there is no plaster required? Uh, yeah, I'm very, uh, I have a video of that, but I think not included in this presentation. Doesn't Today matter. Was, he has all finger movements. He can hold spoon and eat with that hand and do anything. Yeah, uh, Doctor Bhatia. Yeah, I think the wrong person. I don't even. I don't see a lower end radius uh, uh, more than once in five years. Come on. So no, no, no. So, so you, 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 if, if you, if you, if you, if you still had to choose this statement for. I observed during the presentations of others over the last few years at the conferences. Yes. I'm quite convinced that the current methods, aggressive internal fixation uh, is a way to go forward. One must restore an, and uh, all uh, ligamentous injuries also will get addressed if open fixation, one has an open mind for open fixation. So okay. uh, I, I, I'm quite uh, happy to uh, go along with uh, the fixation gang right now. Sure. And uh, as far as the uh, offering. So, so you, you are, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, it, is, uh, it is not that we are doing only external fix. We are also creating distal radius. We have okay. our own indications where to play. Okay. Uh, Stress structures. And we are also using for plasters to 80 plus patients who are neglected. The family does not want to do anything. Fine, fine. So, so, so the, you are not averse to using plasters. No, no. Okay. No, no, no. I yeah. was to using in the discussion. Uh, are there any indications for application of plaster in your practice? Yeah, yes, sir. If uh, the patient is uh, old age and the extra articular. Uh, this is something that has been uh, biting the back of my mind for quite a while. If the fracture has not displaced from the moment of the accident till the patient hobbles his way to the surgeon, and then yes. get, get why the hell do you want to put a plaster? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, why not put a uh, molded thermoplastic splint? Call the patient for repeated x rays once in two weeks to confirm that the displacement does not happen. Uh, and then gets it displaced, and we need to go down yeah. and do something. Yeah, uh, no, I don't think I don't think a plaster can even prevent secondary uh, at least, it, of at the least it doesn't go forward, that is the advantage. Yeah. For three weeks, it does not go over till it becomes sticky. No, I come uh, uh, from literature that there is almost a hundred percent redisplacement rate with the plaster alone in unstable fractures, and and there, there is one very high volume uh, hand surgeon in in uh, not either either it requires a simple splint or it requires internal fixation. There is nothing in between, and he he has done it for I think close to four thousand hand fractures, which include around 800 undisplaced the way you say, then they can, they go home in a splint. Uh, if, if they satisfy any criteria of uh, possible instability, then they go in for internal fixation. Uh, Abhijit, I want- if, if it requires a reduction, then it is unstable. You. Yeah, Dr. Vidisha, you are going to talk about the plasters. You know, regarding the pin and plate construct, Yes, uh, I have used in few patients the low profile radial styloid plate along with distal K wires. Okay, what's your take on plasters? How, how, uh, how happy are you applying plasters for your patients? Those elderly osteoporotic patients with non compliance and non willing for surgery. So, okay, and, and everything else that you want to comment on till now. No, I think just very quickly, um, distal radius fractures, um, you know, they challenge everyone in our clinical practice. Residency days to the senior most consultant. 
and the the funniest part about get these x-rays objectively and every single time we look at the la fontaine criteria and the stewart score uh, we won't have so much of ambiguity about determining which fracture is unstable and which is not so patient taking into consideration osteoporosis taking into consideration shortening taking into consideration uh, intra 